Hey everybody, I hope you're doing really, really well. So in this video, I wanted to cover what planes you actually need, but more specifically when you need them. It's all very well giving people a great big list, or if you pick up a, an old book on the trade and you think, wow, they had all of these wonderful planes. Where do I need to start and what should I get and why? Okay, my recommendation to you straight away is start off with a number four Bailey style plane can be the bedrock style or bailey whichever you want bevel down okay bevel down is the best configuration for proper work in my opinion and in my experience we'll touch on that later the reason for the number four is it's easy to handle if you buy an older one it's easy to correct if the sole isn't dead flat and if your sole is slightly concave your work is screwed you won't be able to plane properly okay you can clean up joints, small practice joints, and you can do small projects quite easily with a number four and you can become its master. And you will then start to understand how brilliant it is to be able to adjust things as you go with a minimum amount of effort. So start with a number four. My second one after the number four would be the number five. Once your project gets a little bit bigger and you want to do a little bit more work, that's the perfect choice. You can shoot longer edges, you can get onto a shooting board with a bit more control. Fantastic, widely available second hand. And again, bevel down, don't go for the bevel up. In my experience, bevel ups, they do a good enough job, but they were a quirky plane made by Stanley and Stanley could have cured the cracked mouth problem that they had on them if they wanted to. They just weren't that great a plane. For whatever reason, and I've got my suspicions because they might be, they seem less complicated, but they're more of a faff. It's just, that's a separate video, but stick with a number five next. Now your project's got bigger and maybe you want to start dealing with timber, which is maybe rough sawn, but still your boards aren't massive. Buy a second number five. There is a school of thought that says buy a second cutting iron for your number five, have one ground, for the rough stock removal and have the other one for using it as a mini triplane. Worst idea ever. Reason being is that that number five isn't particularly expensive to pick up on the used market. And especially if you're gonna do rough work, just pick one up and use it. Then you can use the planes in sequence without having to release, take out blades, drop them in, make adjustments. Once you've got to that level, you're already starting to commit a little bit to this. Same thing, with the smoothing plane, there is a school of thought that says a jack plane sole doesn't need to be particularly flat. If you're just using it as a roughing tool, that is true to some extent. You can get away with a little bit more, but if you're gonna use it to shoot an edge, you're gonna use it on your shooting board and various other things, it still wants to be a flat soled plane. So you're gonna to wanna to check it. You're gonna make sure that's right. And even brand new planes from good manufacturers aren't always right. Now, if you wanted to tack on a third plane to that, you're gonna want something called a trying plane. Our US friends quite often call these jointing planes. Um, I think of a jointing plane with something that's a little bit longer. Now, something you could consider, which isn't often recommended, is the number six. Now, the number six is just a little bit shorter than a number seven, but not by much. But the reason I like it is because of cost, on the vintage market, they're a lot cheaper. They're easy to handle. And for furniture projects that you're probably gonna make at home for use in your own home, the sole is more than long enough. I made a 10 foot ash table, um, 10 foot long ash table for a friend. And yes, the timber came off machines, but I shot the edges with a number five because they were straight and consistent and it was just about taking a consistent shaving. If I had to true up things, a number six would be more than adequate to do it. And to give you an idea of cost saving, number six, if you go vintage, is I believe about 50, number seven, about 100. Some people that might not make a difference, but all of a sudden you start adding all this stuff up, it can get a little bit pricey. So there we go. If I then wanted to get into converting rough sawn boards, you want a wooden jack plane. No two ways about it. 
Why am I mentioning a scrub plane? Because you don't need one. With the reading that I do through old British texts on the tools you use to do that, you use a jack plane because it starts to flatten it off as you go. And for me, that works really well. Again, you can disregard what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to copy me. I'm telling you what works really effective for me and to some extent is backed up by historical practice. A num just a good old wooden jack. There's a number of these on UK eBay especially. You don't have to pay very much for it. Then a wooden trying plane. And again, there's lots of them. I've got a lovely one that I will take out of my tool chest and show you on another video. But again, the main advantages of these is they are very low friction. They just glide across the timber. They, they feel light and easy to manage where you compare, you'll soon do it. If you get a big metal plane and you start trying to convert rough sawn boards with it, if you do it once in a blue moon, fine. But if you kind of want to get into that vibe where you do a little bit of timber processing, you'll want to get those. Now, the half sizes of planes, should you look at those? So specifically, we're talking at something like the four and a half um, and the five and a half that I don't have one here to show you. If you want to, fine. The five and a half is a bit longer than the number five, but not as long as a six. And again, if you've got your smaller projects or you kind of want to just bring your workflow together and using one plane, why not? It's fine. You can use that if you want. It's not a miracle tool. Um, some people really like it. You can go for that if you want. Um, do you need a number eight? Um, maybe if you had something really specific you needed to do, but I think it might be the kind of tool I've never needed to use one and I've worked as a joiner and again, we don't make much furniture at work, but we have made some, made tables and the odd chair and whatever. In all the years I've been at work, um, and even as a kid, I can't remember people taking that one down from the shelf and using it. Four and a half smoother, you can try one if you want. I would say the only people that might really like that is if you've got the hands of some kind of monster, you know? Um, my dad's got massive hands, massive hands, and he always just used the number four all the time. And he's used his number four so much that the spin wheel in here, you can see it's got that piece of brass shoulder. It's been used so much that spin wheel is about to just shear off. He's retired now, so it kind of saw him through. But um, those are the planes, and it's more specifically when you should get them. Because one of the dreadful things about a lot of hobbies is grab a catalog, grab a book, watch a YouTuber. Before you know it, you've dropped a load of money on loads of tools. That's your prerogative. If you want to do that, collecting things and acquiring things, that's fine. I don't have anything against that. But like I said, you don't need to worry about it. If you're really small or you're a kid, a number three might be an option as your first smoother. But like I said, number four, first plane. Learn how to master it. It's a genius little tool. Number five, close behind. Helping you as your projects get a little bit bigger and you can start to process rough timber if you buy a second one. You want to start jointing edges and dealing with something that's a little bit longer and you want to take some uh, broader shavings on the faces of things. And number six is a great option because it's cheaper. But if you want to, a number seven. Number eight, in my opinion, is overkill. You want to start processing rough boards seriously. You want to maybe get into that whole hand tool purist thing. A jack plane. Decent British jack plane, that kind of pattern, absolutely fantastic. You might take your little time to tune it up and get it right, but it's going to be a godsend. And then lastly, if you're going to finish up processing your timber by hand, you're going to want a wooden trying plane. That's going to do you well. So they're my recommendations. I'm sure you'll find many to the contrary, but I can't think of anything worse than living with a bevel up plane having to have lots of different bevels at different types of angles. And these, you know, this jack plane, if you want to use it like a lot of people use the bevel up planes, you can get it to deal with contrary timber just as well by using this, the cap iron. Forget your mouth settings. You don't need an adjustable mouth. You just move that closer to the cutting edge. We'll cover it in another video and you can deal with it. And if you get into the point where your shavings are so thin 
and the cap iron is so close and the wood is ripping that badly, it's probably wood that should be scraped anyway and you're not judging things correctly. Um, and the other thing that's so irritating about a bevel up plane is that at least with the wooden ones, yes, you've got to tap the iron and tap the body to make the plane irons adjust, but with the metal one, you've got that added friction. But if you want to make an adjustment on the fly, which is the huge benefit of a metal plane, you can't get to the adjusters. And then you've got to get a little hammer and tap it to the side and go and go and go. It's an utter waste of time. I don't get the whole bevel up obsession. Like I said, if Stanley wanted to, they could have made loads of them, just like the bedrock style plane. They could have, if they were that good, they would have caught on. But again, if you're having success with them, stay with them. I'm not asking you to come over to my side, but for me, that's my recommendation. And I hope for some people, it might add a bit of clarity.